Doormats. What is a doormat? Well, it's a mat placed in a doorway. I mean, obviously. In which people can wipe their shoes upon entering a building. But this same word can be attributed to a submissive person. A person who lets other people dominate them. In other words, the people who are meant to be stepped on. Just like a doormat. Whoa! Y- you see what I did there? Anyways, today I would like to have a little discussion with just the tad bit of ranting about doormat characters in anime and manga. But before I go on though, it is important to note that there are different type of doormat characters. There are your extreme doormats who are characterized by being stoic and don't really have much to say. The characters that would fall in these categories are maybe some of your kudres, you know, your typical expressionless characters, or your servant characters, who are extremely loyal and submissive to their masters. But the focus of this video is the other type of doormat characters. The pathetic characters. The ones that you might call a loser. Who gets shit on by fucking everybody in the show. And it's not just because of bad luck or unfortunate circumstance. It's because they just kind of let it happen. Or the way they go about things is what led them up to that unfortunate situation. I mean, take Zenitsu from Demon Slayer for example. When you see this guy, when you see his character, for the very first time, it is made very clear to us that this man gets absolutely no bitches, which makes him more desperate, which makes him more creepy towards women, which leads to the lowering of his reputation amongst his peers, which finally results into him getting no bitches, and the cycle continues. Now, I'm not saying that he has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. I mean, he gets to be cool every now and then for like 30 seconds when he goes sicko mode. But other than that, I feel like his character is nothing more than just a comic relief. I mean, the author really fucked this guy in the ass, made him stuck to this character trope. Which is kinda sad actually, because I think with more time, his character could have really been developed into something better. Not saying that there's anything bad for a character being a comic relief, but there are ways to go about it, you know, and the perfect situation for them. Take Aqua from Konosuba for example. I mean, despite being a supposed goddess of this world, Aqua is pretty much useless in most situations. You know, going as far as endangering the people around her whenever she tries to do something useful. Jesus Christ. But that's done in a way that doesn't get stale. And a part of that is because her quote-unquote useless persona is complemented by Kazuma's cynical commentaries, which is great. And to add to that, the four primary characters in Kinesuba have great chemistry. You have an asshole for a main character, a useless goddess, a masochist, serial arsonist. And all of these elements makes for a fun dynamic. So you can hardly notice the patheticness that is this bitch. Now I'd like to say that these characters and a bunch of others that I haven't mentioned are forgivable. Because no matter how much of a loser they are, they're still a side character. So them being pathetic and annoying hardly matters to the plot. And you don't really have to endure their patheticness in every scene. But the same couldn't be said, however, if you're the main fucking character. Some doormat characters are barely, just barely watchable for me, but what would you think would happen if this doormat is in almost every scene of the show? Well, you get shit. Fucking show. First, on my exhibit on my pathetic main characters is... I know a lot of you are gonna hate me for this. Takemichi from Tokyo Revengers. Now, I, I, I know I know that there are many of you maybe fans with the show and just a heads up, I'm gonna shit on it pretty hard. But hear me out first, okay? One, you can't dislike the video. And second, 
just hear me out. He hear my reasoning out, okay? And why I hate this little bitch of a main character, so don't click off yet. Okay? Sounds good? Okay, Tokyo Avengers is a gangster show. And it's about this guy, Takemichi Hanagaki, a 26-year-old unemployed man. One day while watching the news, he heard about an accident and one of the victims was his childhood girlfriend. Well, he was pretty sad about it and while he was busy being sad, he finds himself falling into an approaching train on a subway. But instead of dying, he goes back to the past where he was a 13-year-old gangster and now has another chance to save his childhood girlfriend and another chance to reinvent his life. And that's basically the premise of the show. So let me get this straight. You have this guy who went back to the past to the brain of a 26-year-old and basically knows what's going to happen next in his life. But explain to me. Just explain to me, how the fuck is he still so fucking incompetent, man? Holy shit, like, I know you're shocked and all, but the things that happened, you just sent back through time instead of dying. But come on, man, have the balls to stand up for your friends. Like, Jesus Christ, you knew, you knew that this was going to happen, but you just forgot? Wait, I think this place is kind of familiar. I'm... I think this is the place where we got fucking beat up. Oh, I guess I'm right. Well, guys, I'm sorry. I guess I just forgot. What the fuck? And how can you not have the balls to just beat the shit out of them, man? Like, I'm pretty sure I could beat up some middle schoolers, even if I have a 13-year-old body, you know? As long as I have my strong adult brain, you know? Don't you like fantasize beating the shit out of your childhood bullies or some shit? How is this guy so... So... You're so... You're such a little bitch, man. And if you don't want to get hurt, like, I don't know, get the fuck out of there. Like, the guy from Erased at least put up some fight. And he was in a 7-year-old's body versus an adult man. Like, yeah, I'm well aware that he got cocked in the end, but... Come on, you gotta give the guy some credit. But this little shit, however, what the fuck did he do? He ate some beatings left and right, like it was fucking pancake on morning or something. Like, Jesus Christ. And he fucking cried at least once every episode, man. Like, Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up. Like, I know you're in the 13 year old's body and all, going all through the puberty hormones and shit, but come on. You're 26! You're still 26 inside the 13 year old's body! Holy fucking shit, man! Get your shit together, you limp dick fuck! Takemichi! Shut up! Takemichi! Will you shut up? Shut the hell up! Shut 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 up! To add to that shit, how the hell am I supposed to believe that these brick shit houses are fucking middle schoolers? Like. Huh? Does this look like a middle schooler to you? Like, I mean, I know it's an anime and all, it's like all fantasy and shit, but like, come on, if you're gonna pass this anime as in getting in a mod type of shonen, like, at least made him go to high school or something. At least I would believe that these guys would go to high school, but no, I guess let's just go to middle school because that's where it is. I, I don't know what. Like, what? I'm so done with the show. I mean, show is not that all terrible, I guess. But the main fucking fuck this main character. I I I give this main character four fucking tear sacks out of ten.
Yes, we're raiding them now. Shut up. Oh shit, I think I know now why it's set in a middle school. Because the show is mid. <laughs> it's based in middle school and it's mid. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that fucking funny? Moving on to the next character. It's this guy from Please Don't Bully Me Nagatoro-san. I mean, what more can I say about this guy? He's socially inept and is getting bullied by girls younger than him. And that's pretty much the whole show. He lacks the spine to go against this girl, but maybe because he likes it? I don't know. But this guy, you know, the way they wrote his social awkwardness to the show was hardly annoying to me, surprisingly. I mean, normally if I see a main character like this, I just can't bring myself to finish the show, but it's not the case in this show. I think it's because of how much of a conniving little cunt Nagatoro is towards this guy. I mean, it's the same thing with Aqua and Kazuma really, you know? Because Nagatoro pretty much complements the anime equivalent of this emoji. And it just leaves the audience thinking, damn, am I just watching bullying? Is this just bullying in anime? Holy shit, I, I really feel bad for this guy. But, god I wish that were me. And he actually develops into a passable human being in the later chapters of the manga. I guess that's pretty nice, so... I give Senpai a 6 for effort. Guys, I think this video is getting a little too long than I expected. And I think I'm just going to do a part 2 because I have oh real life God. responsibilities. Oh, so I'm just going to summarize my thoughts on these two characters. First is Takamechi, who is a limp dick bitch, and he sucks, so fuck him. And Senpai, who is also a little bitch, but he has a conniving bitch with him, so that makes his character okay, I guess. I mean, yeah, 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 I know. Takemichi is supposed to have his character develop in the later parts of the anime, but I just can't fucking stand him, man. Fuck this guy. And, oh, and I heard that the action sequences weren't very good, so, ooh, yeah. Uh, for a fighting anime, that's not really what you want to do, so I think I'm just going to stick with my gut in this one. Yeah, so if you want to watch part 2, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, hit the notification bell on your way out, so you know when it comes. And yeah, I've been Milkfish, signing out.